Hey everyone, sorry to keep you waiting. Let's move on to the next uh, part of our lesson. Um, we're going to talk about the rest of our 2D considerations, and then we're going to do the one 3D piece of this model, which is going to be the back of the neck. So first of all, let's talk about the 2D considerations remaining on the body. First thing is the heel pocket. When we go to import this model into our uh, computer, aided machining program, uh, computer aided manufacturing program, CAM, uh, in order to do a cavity you have to have a closed shape. So to do the heel I just made the heel pocket extend a little bit past the body and that gives us an area to mill out. I also put the dots where the screws will go. Next thing is the pickup pockets. Note that I tilted this pickup a little bit just to line up the poles. I like how it looks. doesn't matter sonically too much. Um, kind of matches the shape of the body too. So uh, after I decided where I wanted the pickups, I offset them and made a closed loop that we'll use to mill a pocket. Did the same thing for the bridge pickup. Lastly, the electronics cavity. Uh, basically just make two lines. You have your uh, actual cavity spot. Um, make it as big as you need to. Um, might want to get fancy with battery shape and just cut to clear your pots. Um, I prefer to make a big open cavity so I can experiment with different configurations. Once you have that, then also define the lip um, and the, both of those would be on the back. Alright, next thing is the neck. Uh, we already made the neck shape um, on the original drawing, but when we go to do 3D, we're working from the back. So just take this and go transform, mirror, and uh, then just mirror it, and we'll work on the neck shape. Uh, you also want to define what the edge of the heel is. Um, that's right where it's going to meet the body. And then lastly, pick a couple spots to define your the 3D shape of the back. When, you know, when we talk about like C shape or D shape or whatever it is that you like, um, you need to do that in a couple places. And I'll show you in a second. Uh, lastly, notice that this, uh, in the side profile here, that the neck, the back of the neck is parallel to the body and the fingerboard is angled a little bit. Uh, that's just how I prefer to do my body is kind of worked it out over the last few that I've built and it feels really nice still lets you have um, a normal heel pocket without trying to put an angle in it or anything and it works pretty good all right so now let's talk about some 3d stuff we have that outside drawing of the uh, neck that we did um, and then we had some places where we wanted to define this shape. Um, this is what some people might call like a shallow C, uh, but you know, work out however you like. You only need to do it in two places really. Do it around the first fret and do it wherever you want the heel transition to start. Um, and once you have all that wire framed up, see it's just a basic wire frame of a neck, Rhino is a pretty powerful tool for creating 3D surfaces. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So we'll go surface, sweep two rails to make our neck back. Oh. Pick the wrong ones. This one and this one. Oh. Cross section curves. simple sweep and now you've got one side. Um, I've learned over the years that Rhino behaves best if you kind of do each side of the center line separately. So I'll show you my way. Oh. And sweep. All right, so now we've got a simple neck back. Next thing is the flat part of the heel. So let's go surface from planar curves. Since this is flat, it'll behave. Okay. 
Um, so there's some simple shapes. Uh, then the last thing we care about is the actual uh, square part of the headstock. So let's make that. So we'll go surface, uh, extrude curve straight. So pick your headstock shape and we'll extrude it to the uh, thickness that we put on that side profile of the neck. So now you've got your basic, basic neck shapes. Um, the next thing we want to do is all the transitions, right? So let's do the heel first. Notice that I've got a single line that defines the heel. And if you look at this in profile, <clears throat> it's actually a very simple curve. There's no, uh, it, it comes tangent to the neck right at this joint. Um, this makes for pretty good behavior. If you put a uh, flat spot in here, it doesn't behave as good. So let's go surface, sweep one rail, and the cross section curves will be this surface edge and this curve because we want it to be parallel here, but a sharp corner here. Hit enter. If you do simple sweep, it doesn't look as good. You don't get your parallel. So simple sweep off this time and sweep it. That's it. No, ma no mystery. Let's do it again on this side. Cross section curves, surface edge, and curve. Sweep it. That's it. Got a nice looking heel transition. And in this ghosted view, it gives you little reflections that show you that things look pretty parallel. But in a minute, um, I'll show you some powerful surface analysis tools that Rhino has. So the next thing is this transition into the headstock. Uh, you got a nice round shape here and you've got a square shape here. Um, let me show you. All right, so the first thing we want to do is get rid of the pieces we don't need. So let's go to explode. And what that does is it blows up this extrusion into its component surfaces. So now we can get rid of the parts that we don't need. Um, notice that it split it between this straight part there and where the curve starts. So obviously we don't need that. Let's get rid of it. And then we're also going to have um, curved transition through here too. So let's get rid of that. Okay. Um, since we are going to transition to a flat headstock, we should go ahead and draw that before we get rid of any more pieces. So end and all right and then lastly let's create a surface from planar curves the navigation is a little clunky because I'm using my MacBook touchpad. This is a lot quicker if you have a 3D mouse, like the um, 3D connection space navigator. Pretty great mouse. All right, so we created a surface from planar curves. All right, so now we want to create a um, shape that goes up and blends in with this. Um, something I'm going to do different than what you might expect, though, is uh, I'm going to make a curve. This this neck transition curve is going to continue along the back of this part of the headstock. It's going to be round all the way through there. Um, I just think it'll look cool. So uh, one thing I want to do is just define, define an intermediate curve through here. So let's just draw a circle tangent to three curves. So it'll be tangent, tangent, tangent. And let's trim it. Okay. <clears throat> and then now we can get rid of this side because this is going to be all curved back here. Um, Uh, 
O snap, O snap perpendicular. No, well, why aren't you behaving? One more time, end perpendicular, enter. All right, let's join those. <clears throat> All right, so now we've got an intermediate shape to the back of our heel or uh, uh, headstock transition. So surface, sweep, surface sweep one rail. And the cross sections would be that surface edge. This one we just made. And then this vertical surface here. And sweep. So there's our neat little transition that we made. Um, now we can trim this surface to match it. So let's go cutting objects. Objects to trim. Done. All right. Nice little sweep through there. Now let's do the other side. Surface, sweep one rail, cross section curves. Got a weird bump right here, so let's try simple sweep, see what that looks like. Um, it's okay, but let's check it out. Uh, looks okay. Uh, the only thing is that it's not um, going to meet this edge very cleanly if we swept those two rails. You'd end up with like a weird spot back here. So let's let's try something. Let's look at it um, from the top view. Just see that if we like that curve. Actually, it doesn't look too bad. It looks pretty good. So uh, what we can do with that is project it onto a surface that does more of what we want. So let's try this. Let's take that curve that we drew. And let's split it with that surface. And then let's go surface, sweep one rail. Try using the actual surface. Get a nice parallel one. Yeah. And sweep. All right. So now we can take that edge here and go surface. Well, actually, uh, we want curve from objects, project. So we'll pick the edge and we're going to project it onto here. And now we've got a curve that's actually on this surface with which we can use to split it. So cut off the part we don't want. And that looks pretty sharp. Uh, notice that there's that gap there though. So all we're going to do is we're just going to sweep it again. This time we're going to do two rails. Surface, sweep two rails. Um, actually, let's cancel out. What we want to do is uh, join these so that it behaves like one curve. So let's try again. Surface, sweep two rails. Pick that curve and this curve. Our cross section curves will be that edge and this edge. And that's given us a lot more of what we want. And sweep it. All right. So now we've completed in just a couple of minutes, we've made a whole back of a neck um, that we can use to give instructions to. Uh, a CNC machine to cut this out. Um, looks pretty good. Uh, one thing that we can do though is uh, use some of the tools that Rhino has to make sure that it's what we really like. 
and uh, one of these let's turn off some lines real quick so that we are just looking at the 3d surfaces that we made so let's go to analyze surface and environment map and we'll pick everything we just drew and now we can look at it in kind of a chromed out view and this will tell you if all your curves are fair um, just by kind of looking at the transitions and uh, that looks pretty good there's a little bump there um, I think that's more of a limitation of the of the video card on my little MacBook here than um, anything that's actually there uh, actually and if you want to check that um, a lot of times those little surface anal anomalies will go away if you join the surfaces so let's join the ones that we care about analyzing and we'll see how they look so let's try again analyze environment map and look that that went away That looks pretty good. I like it. Obviously, uh, we'd have the other side of that headstock to cut away. And that's just making a simple surface. I think from what I've shown you, you could figure that out. Uh, let's check out the heel transition. And that looks pretty, pretty good, too. Uh, another tool that Rhino's got that's pretty great for this stuff is... Uh, called zebra analyze surface zebra and this does the same thing as environment map but rather than having a chromey reflection um, it's giving you kind of like surface contour lines that tell you what's going on and see how there's no weird lines through here at all that means that that headstock is very very smooth um, maybe a weird spot right there but and honestly, honestly, it doesn't look too bad. Um, that's something that it looks close enough that uh, you're not going to see that. After we mill this out with a half-inch ball mill, that'll disappear. And let's check out the heel transition. That looks pretty good, too. All right, so that's it. Um, how to make a a surface that you can use for exporting. So in the next video um, we're going to export some stuff and open it up in a CAM program and go from there. So thanks for watching.